All right, Matt is warming up his strokes because he's excited about Tennis Con 5. We're going back to Newcomb's Ranch. Matt is yeah. back. I'm back, baby. And, and today we've got a great video with the great Jeff Salenstein. Yeah, Salzy. Salzy. He's part of Tennis Con 5. And uh, make sure that you stick around to the end of this video because we're going to show you how you can get on the alert list to Tennis Con 5 so you know when it comes out. Plus, get 30 of the best videos in Tennis Con history. Yeah, that's the top. 30 lessons from the last four years of tennis con. It's gonna be good stuff. All right, enjoy this video. All right, so this slinger bag right here is amazing because it's helping me with my forehand. If you're struggling with your forehand, get a slinger bag and follow my instructions. Now, what I'm trying to do is teach myself the modern forehand, that's right. Even my forehand on the tour back in the late 90s and early 2000s, it wasn't a modern forehand. Okay, I had a big backswing. I didn't really move the racket as efficiently as possible. Yes, I got to top 100 in the world, but I could have been better. And I'm teaching myself a new forehand right now. And I want you to take a look at this lesson where I break it down. There's one big thing that I'm working on in this lesson. And I wanna show you what that is right now. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the lesson. Turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel. Let's get to that lesson on the forehand right now. All right, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna dig into this forehand lesson and you can see that I was in the middle of a workout and I was recording myself hitting forehands. You can see all the balls on the court. Uh, I was hitting serves on the other side. So that's why there's so many balls uh, by the baseline and behind me. But we're gonna work on the forehand. I also want you to pay attention to some of the commentary. So this is really important for you to see what I'm thinking about and what I'm focusing on. So let's, let's play the video right now. All right, so we're gonna work on the forehand. Dropping the racket here. So you can see, so you can see that I have a tendency in my backswing to keep the racket head up. And what I'm trying to do is teach myself how to drop the racket head so it looks more like this. So let me go ahead now and show you my backswing, uh, the backswing that I, that I had on the tour, and then even trying to shorten my backswing, how it stays up like this. All right, so this is my forehand with a slightly bigger backswing um, that I had you know, when I played on the tour. You can see my elbow is up in a way but you can see how when I take the racket back, I break the plane back here. But what I really want you to see is when I come, start to come through, see how the racket tip is way above the hand. And even in here, you can see it's way above the hand. There's no point in the swing that the racket gets parallel. Now, why is this a problem? Well, for, for one, it's not a huge problem for me in that I was able to achieve top 100 in the world with this forehand. But to have a truly elite forehand, I believe you need to model the pros. And with most of the big forehands today, they get their racket parallel to the baseline, excuse me, to the ground. And again, you can see how, look at the angle of the racket. So I could see where if I'm keeping this racket head up like this, I'm not going to get that whip-like effect. I'm not going to get as much acceleration. You see it, it finally squares up where the tip of the racket is about level with the hand right there. It never drops into the slot and, and the racket never goes parallel to the baseline. You know, if you look at Jack Sock, you'll see that his racket gets parallel to the baseline around this stage of the swing. If you look at Novak Djokovic, you'll see a similar thing. If you look at Rafa Nadal, you'll see a similar thing. And if you look at Roger Federer, you'll see the same thing. So I'm doing something very different at this stage of the swing with the racket tip so high above the hand compared to the best forehands in the world. So again, that tells me the physics, the relaxation, the ability to create more lag, more racket head acceleration, more spin, it's missing in my forehand. And so that's what I'm working on now. When I get on a ball machine, I'm really trying to drop that racket. And so <clears throat> now what I wanna do is, this is an example of a bigger backswing. I now wanna show you a shorter backswing where I'm still doing this. This is not an easy habit for me to break. 
Okay, this is an example of a forehand where I'm working on my first move. You can see the racket is up, the elbow is away, and from here, I'm practicing dropping the racket and not taking it back so far. But what I want you to see, again, is look how high the racket tip is above the hand. You're not, just not going to see the best players in the world doing that. So I think, again, this creates a problem for me with racket head acceleration, even getting under the ball, even timing the ball, especially balls that skid uh, fast through the court. So I'm really working on trying to fix this. And again, you can see this is a more compact backswing, but this racket tip is just too high. So now I want to show you how I'm working on it with the ball machine and really exaggerating, trying to get that racket to drop, get that racket head to drop so it's more parallel to the ground. So let's just start this over again. I want you to listen to what I say here. All right, so we're going to work on the forehand. Now I'm getting that racket, trying to get that racket to drop like this so it's more parallel to the ground. Drop, dropping the racket here. It has a tendency to stay up. See, it has a tendency to stay up, that racket head. All right, so you can see I'm even just exaggerating. I'm not even worrying about a high first move, and I'm just focusing on trying to get the racket to be more level. And you can see it's still, the racket head's still above the hand, but it's better. It's not as extreme as the way that I normally do it. So I'm eliminating the big, the big take, uh, the, the, the high first move where I take the hands higher and I'm just feeling like I'm taking the racket back with it, with this more parallel to the ground. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting the racket in advance. Instead of starting from the ready position, I'm starting with my first move and all I'm trying to feel is that racket head dropping. And you can see, look what I did. I, I, that was the best one, that was the first one. Look at how I just drop it, and that is more parallel to the baseline. So this is the learning process, identifying what you wanna work on, picking the right thing to focus on, and then exaggerating, putting yourself in position to change how your body works. So this time the ball comes, and again, look at that. It's more parallel to the baseline compared to what I normally do. So again, I set the racket, look at my energy with my feet, I'm dancing, and I set the racket with the first move, and then look at that drop. <laughs> That's probably the best, the best I've ever done it right there. I'm just trying to mimic the best forehands in the world. So I set the racket again, I raise up the elbow a little bit more than I normally do, and even if the ball doesn't come, notice again how I'm just ready. I have great energy. Let's look at that again. Let's look at all my energy. So even if the ball doesn't come out of the ball, uh, the slinger bag, I got my energy. So let's skip ahead here and see, look at that little move I'm doing here. I want you to see the learning process. See that? Go back right there. See, I'm mimicking how it's going to feel. I'm, look at how I'm taking the racket. I'm thinking, okay, look at how it's parallel to the ground and then I just, I'm mimicking that feeling of going forward. The learning, look at the learning process. So this one, I was surprised, right? I was getting ready to take a swing. It surprised me and now I didn't quite get the racket head to drop as much. Now it's still better than what I normally do, but it's not as parallel as the forehands we saw before. See that, I'm exaggerating. I'm actually making the tip of the racket go below the hand with a little shadow swing. And look, it's, it's getting better. There, look at that. Look at how far down the tip of the racket is below the hand. I've got to exaggerate to make sure this is gonna, this is, this habit's going to change. See that one, I didn't quite get it to drop. See that? Now I probably thought that I was doing it but now looking at the video, I can tell it didn't really work. Oh, so look, I just said that was a bad one. It flew, so I gave the camera, gave the camera, the, the, my mobile phone recording it, I gave it feedback. So I hit it and it flew. So that's interesting, right? If I don't drop the racket, I might be flying these forehands because I'm not able to get the right amount of rotation on the ball to drop it in. Okay, you can see this one also not dropping enough. 
See, I can feel that, and so I'm exaggerating. This is the learning process. See how you can take this out on the court, and you can focus on this yourself. You can focus on a tip and exaggerate the learning process. Here we go. Look at this one. Look at how, look at how parallel that one. So I got it. I exaggerated, and it happened because on the forehand before, on the shadow, look what I did. So I'm exaggerating. Look at the dancing. This one, I didn't quite get it to drop enough. And so that's my first series. I want to go through another series of forehands, but that's the first series where I'm really trying to exaggerate. I'm giving myself proactive tips on this. All right, this is round two of my forehands where I'm really exaggerating, dropping that racket. Let's listen in. Let's get some insight on how I'm coaching myself. Here we go. Let's go again. Look at how I start. I'm starting with the racket higher now, elbows away. Waiting for the ball. I'm dancing. Here we go. Holding the racket a little lower too. So I said holding the racket a little bit lower but really it's in a good position. It's just funny how things can feel. Now I'll go to the drop the racket and look at that. I get it down. Start with the racket up and now I'm going to drop it. Got it again. Look at that. So I'm really making great progress compared to what I used to do. This is looking more like the pros, the top pros in the world. Exciting. Now let's listen in some feedback that's going to be coming. Look at that. I did it again. That felt good right there. That felt good right there. So you've got to love the positive feedback. I'm giving myself reinforcement when it feels good. Now I'm not sure the racket got parallel here, but again, it's certainly better than what I normally do. So I got the racket here and I just, I just drop. It gets pretty parallel. Pretty awesome, isn't that? That felt good right there. That was loose right in there. Loose. So it's loose when I drop the racket head. That was loose too. So I'm focusing on that looseness, that hand being looser instead of the tension. So the tension in my hand is keeping the racket head up too high. That was loose too. That was loose too. See, look, I just did a shadow stroke. It just goes low and drops when you do it right. It just goes low and it drops when you do it right. Same with that. So my hand is super loose on these uh, when I swing. It feels real good. See, it feels real good. I'm giving myself that positive feedback. I'm keeping my hand loose and I'm just trying to drop it. That one felt tighter here. That one felt tighter here. So I felt tighter on that forehand. And so what I want you to see here is that I felt tighter on the forehand and let's see what the backswing looked like. So let's see. So that could be the solution that if I'm a little bit tight, look at that, the racket didn't drop and I got a little too close to my body. So when I loosen my hand and I drop the racket with more relaxation, I get it right. That one felt tighter here. That one felt tighter, but as I said tighter, what did I do? I shadowed what I wanted to do next time. See how, see how I have the racket. Look at that. See how I'm feeling like it's below the hand. Very important to exaggerate. So right after I hit that, that forehand that felt tight on, on the next one, I focused on relaxation. Now, did I get the racket to drop as much as I wanted? No, but I did get that relaxation. So this is an example of where it felt loose, but I didn't get the racket down. So I would look at myself on video and then I would try to fix it next time. And so that's the learning process, that positive feedback, that focus on dropping the racket and having the loose racket and the loose arm so I can look, like more, look more like the best pros in the world. So for me, it's like a two-part deal on the forehand, how I start with my first move, which is a different first move than I used on the tour. And then, Maybe more importantly is how I drop the racket, how I drop the racket into the slot, into the right position, and what I do with my wrist and my hands. 
I want you to take a look at that, okay? I want you to focus on that. You don't have to do it yourself, but the point of this is you want to focus on the keys that are gonna help you improve your forehand. I had two big keys, set the racket and then drop it in a different way than I have been accustomed to. <laughs> All right guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. Make sure to subscribe to their channel, follow them on all the social media. Make sure to subscribe to Matt at Coffee Break Tennis. On the YouTubes. On the, the YouTubes. Best of all the social medias. That's right. And uh, what we want you to do right now is get on our TennisCon 5 alert list. Free tickets are not ready yet, but if you get in their alert list, we'll notify you when they are. Plus, what else can they get, Matt? There's also the top 30 lessons from all of Tennis Con history. So make sure you pop in your email below. This is year number five, so there's a lot of history in the top 30. Uh, they're gonna be pretty good. Yeah, so we wanna do something special this year. Give you those 30, you get free 48 hour access to, to all the videos. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.